All right, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Oathbound Paladin build that I use. Uh, I am an Oathbound Paladin, uh, Oath of Protection, so I am a tank. Uh, many people have asked me exactly what my build is, how do I get around it, um, and I'm just going to quickly go over these things. Uh, let's start with our stats. Um, these are the stats that I have just sitting in the stronghold right now with some kind of cool stuff. But the most important things that the Paladin that I have built needs to focus on is power, which you can see I have 20,000 power just sitting here. Uh, recovery, which I have 7,000, which is pretty good. Armor pen, which is 4,900. Eh, it's not the greatest. And defense, which is 17,384. Alright. Crit chance, uh, I build so that it's low, and my dam damage resistance should be fairly high. Okay, so 68% is about the norm. When I actually go into combat, this goes up a lot, so keep an eye on this. There is a cap for the amount of damage resistance you can have, but... It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you shouldn't focus on defense, okay? So, nothing that great for lifesteal or anything like that. And Everfrost resistance is at 20% because I reinforced some stuff and the current gear I have. Alright. And ju just typical stuff. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and start off with what I'm actually wearing for my character, okay? Because my character is probably the first and foremost uh, as you can see my item level is 3777 and I'm wearing quite a few things so equipment wise I'm using the dusk helmet as well as the dusk bracers so dusk ward armlet dusk restoration counters whereas my armor is elemental drowcraft restoration crest you just simply need to hit up that black ice stuff uh, for upgrades and go ahead and upgrade it all the way. Uh, and then make this. Same thing with the boots. Elemental Drowcraft Restoration Paulians. Alright. So my major focus is power and recovery. Don't get any gear that gives you crit unless absolutely necessary. Um, my weapons are the relics. Uh, I got them up to purple. Though, I made these before the River District really came out, and I really have not done any of the River District, so this is what I'm currently wearing. Alright, so, got up to purple. They're ready to go to Legendary whenever. I was out there way too long. Alright. Cloak. It's Greater Lithander's Cloak. And you'll notice right away, I'm not, I don't have a set bonus with it. Because I'm wearing the Greater... Plated Band of Constitution. Again, I wanted to focus really on having con, having AC, power, recovery, and defense. For my rings, I have a ring of brutality plus five. It's not necessary. I got this on a lucky drop. If I would get something that was more like rising deflection or rising uh, reflex or rising power that were like plus four or plus five, I would take those over this any day. Okay, but this is what I have. Alright, I have Rising Defense, plus 4. Plus 5 wouldn't be bad, but this is what I took. I really recommend getting Rising Defense, because defense is something you really need as a, a Paladin to stay alive. Alright, so, Defender's Gemmed Exquisite Elemental Chainmail. Well, this is kind of important. Uh... It's not necessary, but definitely getting both these pieces to that. Unfortunately, I did not get this other piece to that. I didn't take the time. So I just went with the drought craft. Okay? You can buy these off the auction house if you really want to, but they're kind of spendy. Alright? And then the artifacts. The artifacts. Sigil of the Oathbound Paladin. The most important artifact that you can get. You're going to use it, especially with this build. Um, I'm going to tell you straight up, you can solo Orcus with this build. If you have this up to Mythic, 
because it refreshes quickly, only takes a minute of cooldown, and it increases your damage resistance and heals you. Alright. As many people have noticed, I have the Sigil of the Guardian, so you're going to have to make an alt. Guardian Fighter, get him up to level 60, and go get this artifact, and then claim it on your Paladin. Okay, great for the defense, deflection, and AoE resist. You'll start to notice a theme going on. Power, AoE resist. Defense, deflection, AoE resist. Um, here's the Heart of the White Dragon. I chose it for its additional HP, defense, and AoE resist. And then last but not least, uh, an excellent artifact. Symbol of Fire for the 1000 power, recovery, and defense. It's also really good uh, if you cannot get your hands onto a symbol of fire to go with like a symbol of air, okay? But there are lots of different ways. This, these artifacts are not necessary and they can be kind of pricey right at the moment. I, I think double refinement's going on right now. So they're pricey right now. They'll probably drop down here in a month or two, okay? So next things up is the enchantments. I recommend quartermasters in all of your enchantment slots unless you're not upgrading enchantments. If you're not upgrading enchantments, I recommend something like dark enchantments or azures for the extra experience gain with that chance of getting more diamonds or other refinement items. So, and those refinement items like the enchantments and black opals, ball of sapphires and so forth, you can just sell in the auction house if you don't want them. So, on this one, this one's a little bit trickier. I'm wearing an Azure rank 10 for the extra defense, and then an, a Lesser Soul Forged enchantment. Brings you back to life if you die, and has a short cooldown. I don't recommend anything higher than a Lesser, simply because the chances of you actually going down that quick are fairly low. And it's good chance just in case, you know, you screw up. Sometimes you come back to life when fighting stronger enemies um, generally it won't be used if you're going to be using any other enchantment that's fine there's tons of armor enchantments I do not recommend the, the negation but rather something along the lines of something that would deal damage to enemies when you get hit would be best okay because negation it sometimes works sometimes doesn't uh, it can be quite pricey for it too, so use your own discretion on which armor enchantment you want, but it's not necessary to have anything other than a soul forge. And even me at a 3700, I do die sometimes. It just happens. Okay, like when you're doing dragon flight, dragon hits you really hard, you die. It just happens. All right, got another quartermaster. Okay, this one's a little bit weird. I'm gonna have to go ahead and inspect it so you can see which ones I have on. I have a Vicious rank 11. So I'm actually going to go over to Manage Item Enchantments so you can see exactly what it does. I'm doing it for the Armor Pen and Power. Okay, now you'd be like, well, why do you need Armor Pen? Why don't you have an artifact for that? Well, because the artifacts that I found were immensely better in my mind than something that would give me just straight up Armor Pen and just focus on power. So I went with Vicious. They're a little bit rare to get a, a hold of, but I believe that they're a little bit better uh, simply because you can just put them wherever you want. And when you put it on your companion, you can also multiply that those numbers. So that's really good. Greater Lightning. Um, I wear this so that I can hit multiple enemies, uh, which is nice. And I also use it to reduce cooldown for all of my powers. So... That's why I li love this thing. And then I'm rating it for just straight up power. Again, gotta do this. Azure for the defense, cruel for power and recovery for offensive. Okay, this is a really good enchantment for this class. You can use it in the defense slot or the offense slot. I do not recommend it for the utility period. Again, quartermaster. All right, we have Azure again. We have a Vicious 10. 
to remember what I have in here. Quartermaster there. And an Azure. Okay. The only reason why I'm still wearing Quartermasters is because I was anticipating double refinement. I used up all the stuff, got most things upgraded. Again, Cruels and Azures. Radiant and Cruel. Th these are offensive slots, both of them are, so that's really great. And then this one, again, the Cruel in the offensive slot. Alright, so pretty nifty here. Um, we're going to jump straight over to Companions real quick because I'm want to talk about them before I go into any more things. Okay, so I have five companions, okay? This is why I want my crit to be really low, is the Albert Cub. It can be kind of pricey. I remember I spent like a million diamonds on it. Um, if you fail to critically hit, you do an additional hit for damage equal to 50% of your power. Works great. I like clearing mobs, okay? This guy. I totally forgot the name of this companion, but uh, gives you an additional 5% HP. Uh, I believe it's like Energon or something like that is the name of the companion, but um, definitely not my active. This is a Dread Warrior from the Zen Market. Uh, yeah, 10% <laughs> chance on uh, damage taken to become enraged. Increasing my threat generation by an additional 15%. So I don't become stronger because of it, but I get more of a chance of, you know, having all the threat. Okay? And my active is a con artist. Okay? It's a con. Okay? With rank 12 bombings. I definitely recommend getting these first and foremost ahead of everything else on your character. Okay? And maybe even getting the character all the way up to legendary, but it's not necessary. You you can just get it up to blue if you really want to. And then the rings I got rings from the Masters Forborg. Do you really want to take a look at it? Um, I have radiance for power and azures for defense. All right. The weird thing about this thing is, is that the Everfrost Resistance does not carry over to your character, so don't count it for anything. Uh, but the off, the equip ability of these rings is defense and deflection. You can definitely go for something more along the lines of power and recovery, uh, defense and power, whatever of that kind of combination. Um, I do not recommend crit for any of these. Okay, again... You see the Vicious 12 on there. Gives me more armor pen. But I didn't want to focus too much on it. And then Silvery for that recovery. Alright. And this Lion, I do not recommend actually having it if you are running a tank. If you're running alone, doing content by yourself or in a small group and you're not really doing a whole lot of things that are too troublesome... I mean, you can even do, like, Castle Never with this companion to take the heat off you in case you're kind of weak. Um, but I do not recommend it for the harder content because people get angry with this companion running around, having the enemies turn around and look at it. Uh, so it can be kind of bad. I keep it around because I get the Radiant Weapon stuff. So when your companion uses an ability, they have a 50% chance to apply a stack of Radiant Weapon to you. This effect may only occur once every 15 seconds. And Radiant Weapon grants 2% additional damage as Radiant Damage for 12 seconds. You may have no more than 8 stacks of Radiant Weapon from any source. Okay, and then you get 15% of the Summon Pets ratings. Okay, so nothing too great. Um, if you have a chance to replace this companion with something else, there are tons of great companions out there. Um... And in case you were not wanting to take the con artist, there's a ton of great debuffing companions. I just don't have them. Or even uh, the Moonbeam uh, companion, which is really good. It, it reduces the crit of all of your enemies and increases your party's crit, just not yours. So, also a good companion. 
Okay. So we're going to go straight into the bones. Okay. So as you can kind of see, I do not have any PvP campaign boons. All right. So first off, we have the Dark Fae Hunter for the extra 400 power instead of defense. We have 400 deflect instead of crit. We took action points rather than HP. We took striking foe has a chance to deal 20,000 arcane damage instead of when being struck, you restore yourself. I'm going to tell you right now, your health's not going to drop very quickly with this build. <laughs> okay, and then we went th with this one. When you kill a foe, you gain 135 power for 45 seconds, and it stacks up to 30 times. You can definitely take some other stuff you want if you really want to I I recommend either you know this one uh, which is Elven Resolve or Fae Thistle uh, but Elvish Fury seems to do the trick all right gonna go ahead and take the Reliquary Keeper Strength so power and movement over crit take 400 life steal because you don't really have a whole lot of it and every little bit counts compared to regeneration which regeneration is kind of a weakened stat in this game for whatever reason it it's a stat that works outside of combat and you'll probably have plenty of it so don't worry too much about it okay you want the resistance ignored and when you deal damage to uh yeah uh, you do 20,000 necrotic damage over a few seconds okay and then the target can't heal very well. Okay, as opposed to healing again. Remember, you you don't really need healed all that much. When you deal damage, you gain a stack of madness. All right, gain four thousand power, four thousand life steal, four thousand regeneration, ten. And uh, after it ends, uh, you have to wait to build it up again. So, it is by far the best one here okay because you get all that additional stuff like I said you, you need a little bit of life still but you don't need a lot you need some regeneration but not a lot all right here you're gonna want combat advantage over AoE resist both are pretty good um, if I would redo this I might take AoE resist rather than combat advantage but I want to do a little bit more damage okay 400 stamina gain because I need that stamina. 400 recovery over crit. Uh, 2,000 power based on how much stamina guard it's missing. Uh, you might be using it a lot depending on how you play. And then I went with Winter's Bounty. Uh, you gain a bonus 10% action points when killing a target. This will come in handy with small mobs. Again, it's like the best one. This is like when damaged by FO, 20 stacks, deal up to 15,000 damage to nearby targets. Not a bad choice for Avalanche. But the other ones are not so great. Alright, Underdark. Let's take a quick look. Point of power versus defense. We're going to take power because we're going to have a lot of defense based off of the build alone, so we need to amp up that power just a little bit more. Life steal versus crit. We want that life steal. Combat advantage versus regeneration. Again, bad stat. Okay. Control effects are five percent shorter durations. Very good because we don't like to be controlled all that much. And we gain we gain ten percent damage versus damage. The uh, demons, sorry. Um so yeah, you might be fighting a lot of them, depends on how much you're gonna be playing something like Demogorgon. Prophecy of Madness, Throne of the Dwarven Gods, doing any of the uh, demonic encounters. And I'm not really too sure, but I think some of the enemies in Castle Never are considered demons. So don't quote me on it, but I think they are. Tyranny. Alright. 400 power versus hit points. 400 deflect versus crit. 400 armor pen versus defense. Because remember, we need to make up for that not having a, a armor pen boon for our life steal versus regeneration again regen's not good and then control strength because 
you're going to want to have as much threat as you can build. Um, the reason why I don't have this completely filled in is because that campaign is kind of crazy and long. Okay. Let's go straight to the maze engine rather than going to the guild stronghold. Alright. So, 400 incoming healing bonus versus lifesteal severity. So, not that big of a deal. Alright. Uh, we took control effects will have 5% shorter durations when applied to you. Again, we don't like to be controlled. Gain more action points versus stamina regenerates. Alright. And then... Grants 10% increased control strength. Again, we want control. I mean, compared to these, that is the best one. Elemental evil. 300 power, 200, uh, 2000 max HP versus defense. 400 regeneration versus lifesteal severity. 400 recovery versus crit. Remember, we don't want crit. And then... We want to be able to heal a little bit. Okay, but that's not what we really are going for here. After the effect ends, your recovery is increased by 1,000 for 10 seconds. That's better than life steal severity, stamina gain, and gain crit strike. Okay, so wall of wind all the way. Storm King's Thunder. Alright, so this one's a little tricky. Uh, we're going to get control resistance and max HP versus lifesteal. 400 stamina gain and everfrost resistance versus the incoming healing bonus. We want to have 2000 extra damage on the next hit versus uh, recovery. Big versus, yeah, it's recovery based off of how much stamina we're missing, but. This is definitely the one that you want. Alright. Uh, your max HP is increased by 3200 versus when you kill a foe. Okay. At this point in the game, uh, you'll notice that you're probably not killing enemies very quickly. Okay. At least the stronger ones. The weak ones, maybe. Like, if you're going to be in low level areas and you're not going to really play challenging content, definitely take Vengeful Heat. But if you're not, you're probably going to want this one. Especially if you're going to want tank. Alright, and then chill of winter. When striking a foe, you have a chance to gain a stack of icy chill. At 10 stacks, your next attack clears all stacks and releases a burst that deals up to 10,000 damage to targets close to you. Alright, so we don't heal really. We don't really use potions to heal. And... We do deflect, it's just not very often. So that's why we have that one too. Okay. Okay. Here's something that you will note. Okay. The Cloak Descendancy. This one's a little tricky because I don't have any of the boons in here. It tells you that you'll have one of these two. And... Looking at these, I would recommend this one, Aura of Hope. Okay, the Aura of Despair is not a bad choice because stun effects are really awesome. You're probably going to want to take Healing Heat because you don't want that crit strike. And then here you're probably going to want Recovery because Life Steal is not all that important. And then up here, we do not want Vision of Beyond. We might want Planar Vitality. We might want Aberrant Power, or we might... Let's see, do we want this? Yeah, it, it'll probably be one of these two. Um, if you're looking to deal more damage, I would recommend that one. If you're wa wanting to... Uh, Regain health, I recommend this one. But knowing our luck, probably Aberrant Power. Alright, that's probably the one that you definitely want. Okay, last but not least, the one that we have not really talked about, depending on what your guild has. Uh, there's Power Group Stat Bonus, 
critical severity bonus, enhanced overload, companion ward and slayer, armor pen, enhanced overload slayer, and enhanced overload ward. Okay. Depending on your build, if you went with a armor pen artifact, I recommend power. If you did not, I recommend armor pen. Okay. This is kind of important. And then for the defense one, we get the choices between incoming healing bonus, control resist bonus, critical hit resistance bonus, defense bonus, lifesteal bonus, AOE resistance bonus, and hit points bonus. Okay, I'm going to say defense for the time being until your defense is all the way up to uh, having rank 12s in every slot for Azure's. And then at that point, I would probably switch over to hit points or AOE resist. Or even control resist. Or even crit hit uh, resistance bonus. They're all pretty good. Alright. Utility, you have a lot of choices. You have experience, treasure hunter, mount speed, group heal, revive sickness, glory, and healing bonus. I'm going to recommend the experience. And when appropriate, the treasure hunter and mount speed. Okay, these three are probably the best, but I'm probably going to say this is the one you want. And since this is not a PvP build, I'm not going to recommend any of these. I mean, if you were, I wouldn't even know which one would be the best. So, take it as you will. Alright, so, here's what my feet tree looks like. Feet tree is kind of long, so we have five points in divine action because we want to throw that Divine Call kind of quickly. If you're not familiar with Divine Call, it is your R1 button. And what it does is it taunts enemies when you're in this Paragon. And it changes the speed at which your powers regenerate. How quickly they, they go from having that countdown from, let's say, 15 to 0 and being ready okay usually it cuts it in half uh it really just all kind of depends all right nothing into weapon mastery because we don't want crit chance we want our toughness to be at three because we want more hp we want uh three points into wrathful strikes because we want to deal more damage with that wills uh same thing with our exemplar's haste with encounter powers we want to deal more okay this is not that important because we're going to have a lot of damage resistance without it. Alright. We don't really care about our auras having range. This is kind of a drop stat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're, you generate Divine Call so much faster. You don't really care how quickly it regenerates. It usually it does not require a whole lot. Nothing in Divine Attunement because we're not using healing spells. We don't want to increase crit chance. We don't want to increase healing at all. But we do want to get more HP. So steadfast, definitely five points. All right. So this is the tricky part. Up here, bound by light. Control, str control strength is increased by 10%. Flash of light. Encounter power is due 25%. Uh, or chance to reduce cooldown. Sorry. Uh, of nearby our allies encounter powers by 10%. So, so 25% chance to reduce us. Pretty awesome. So, being a, a support character. Uh, we inspire our allies. And that means me and two other allies within 30 feet all gain 25% more movement speed and 5% cooldown reduction. You can kind of see where this is going. Alright, Echoes of Light, uh, you have a 10% chance to trigger Echo. Echo makes your next encounter power instantly recharge all of your encounter powers. This is really great, especially if you need Templar's Wrath. Alright. Your at will powers apply Purifying Fire to foes. Purifying Fire stacks up to 5 times, dealing 10% weapon damage each time a stack is applied. This damage is doubled for each stack applied to the target. Purifying Fire lasts for 60 seconds, 
but it's removed when you strike the target with an encounter power. Okay? It's good and bad at the same time. Uh, if you are just striking them with your at wills, great. And then Vengeful du Justice. Your Divine Call now also applies Judge to yourself for 10 seconds. Judge increases your damage dealt by 35%, as well as reducing the cooldown on your currently recharging powers by 35%. This is why this is so important. Your encounter powers have a chance to immediately grant you a charge of Divine Call. Okay, so that's everything in the Justice. Uh, Bulwark, we're not going to put anything because there's nothing really to put in there. We're going to go ahead and put some points into Gifts of Light compared to this one, uh, Seraphim, because we do have some healing abilities, just not a whole lot. Mainly the Artifact. Uh, Sigil of the Guardian. Alright, this one gives you more defense from equipment as opposed to healing spells because you don't really use healing spells. And then the most important one, Aura Gifts. Allies within 30 feet gain 25% of your power. They must remain within 30 feet of you for at least 6 seconds to gain this buff. Okay, remember our power without being in combat is 20,000. Alright, so two powers. Okay. So this is kind of weird because I have 104 points. Most people, when they get up to this point, they'll have 70, maybe 75. It just depends, okay? If you're going to be putting points into anything, you're going to want to make sure that you have at least four points, well, three points in these, four if you can, okay, on these select skills. Okay, so Radiant Strike, Divine Judgment, or of Courage. Alright, and then we're going to go down a little bit. We want at least three in Bane. This should be the, your very first power that you ever put four ranks into, is Templar's Wrath. Okay, reason being is Oath of Protection. Gain temp HP equal to 300% of the damage dealt. So you will gain a crap ton of temp HP. You can even use this outside of combat without hitting anything and you can get temp HP. Okay, Oath Strike. This is great because Final Strike forces the target to attack you for three seconds. So very much really good. Uh, and then Aura of Wisdom, before I forget. This is good when you're in a party. If you're not in a party, I recommend a different class uh, feature, but this one is you and your allies within 30 feet of me gain 10% increased recharge speed. Alright, when, it, when it's fully upgraded you get 25%. Okay, so there was a little bit of talk about Binding Oath. It's okay, I do not recommend it for anything. Um, it might be a good fill-in if you don't have the points for uh, Circle of Power which we'll go over that in a second. Um, the other daily will be Shield of Faith. Uh, just creates a shield. Uh, I do not recommend... Where is it? Uh, Divine Protector. I used to run it uh, before the nerf, and now it's pretty much worthless to me. So, use Shield of Faith instead. All right, and here is the Circle of Power. You and allies within the Circle of Power also gain 25% damage resistance and improves all of your outgoing damage by 30% and lasts for 10 seconds. Okay, it's a 30 feet circle. You can see it on the ground. And then the Aura of Solitude. This is what you use when you're not in a party. When no allies are within 30 feet, you deal 12% more damage and healing. Add that in with the additional 9, that is 21% more damage. Okay, very useful. So, if I were to actually try to build it up, first and foremost, work on Templar's Wrath. Then probably Shield of Faith. 
your auras because you want to make sure that you have something to go off of your at wills and either your circle of power or where is it Bane okay those are the ones I would recommend if you're not using Bane and, or circle of power and you just wanted to hit things hard and fast I recommend smite smite is not bad it does what it needs to do if you're looking for something for uh, groups of enemies divine touch could be very useful but not necessary um, because you have an at will that also hits groups of enemies that's what radiant strikes for it lunges forward do not use relentless Avenger under any circumstance it knocks enemies apart from each other plus when you use this your armor pen and damage are increased by 5% for 15 seconds so helps you with that additional damage resistance and that outgoing damage that you need to do so that's what I have here for the powers okay so there's one last thing that we really need to check and that is an important part of mounts okay so there are lots of mounts to choose from with varying powers you'll see that sometimes they have great powers sometimes they don't it just all kind of depends okay you can take uh, guard drake for the additional power uh, I originally started off with the Yeth Hound that gave me additional deflection it's not a bad choice but you might want the, the power one to make things go a little bit quicker or a defensive one so th these are the ones I have at the moment because I have defense deflection and power I believe the the, uh, the defense one came from the level 70 uh, mount that you get for buying a level 70 character uh, with 5,000 Zen and having that speed up there is pretty good all right so here here's my joke of a mount things mainly because the the bonuses I want to get are protectors commodity whenever you summon your summon companion attacks you gain 3% of your power in defense for 10 seconds and it stacks up to four times when you have full action points you gain 10% of, of your armor pen as power which can be good but it also can be bad because you might want to be using it quite a lot whenever your summon companion attacks you gain 1% of your power and defense for 10 seconds so that sounds awfully a lot like this just smaller percentage all right then we have survivor's gift whenever you deflect an attack which we have some deflection you are healed for 1.3 percent of your maximum hp over four seconds and then basically the same thing except for it's three percent rather than 1.3 percent uh again this they you'll notice that the numbers vary a little bit on who's near me and so forth and it also varies on what bonuses I have okay you'll notice on the right what insignia I'm using I'm using all sorts of stuff pr prosperity aggression evasion mastery some dominance a courage a vigor so it you can take it as you will but with this current build I have a 3700 and then with the the post uh, item level update this build will have a item level of about 11,400 so it's, it's an okay build but I'm going to show you something real quick before I let you go and that is what is I keep on talking about my stats and everything how am I powerful? Well, here's the training double. Okay. 
again I have 154,000 HP oops a little tricky and I have 21,000 power damage resistance is 68 percent resistance ignored is 47 percent okay I'm not in combat again I'm going to point out one last thing I did reinforce my armor with recovery whenever possible an action point gain so something that you should know is I'm just gonna smack this thing okay here comes my companion and if you remember correctly here is my stats while I'm in combat just by myself I have more than doubled my power output my resistance resistance ignored is 77 percent up to 78 my damage resistance is 102 percent from 68 and I'm definitely m more powerful my HP did not go up at all as you notice but I th these are just stats that I have without anything else playing a part on it uh, items that you may want to get with this build uh, are the Lyra's Bell and the uh, Tomorrow's Lucky Coin uh, mainly because the coin can give you power or defense or deflection um, the Lyra's Bell mainly for the fact that it brings back your companion from death uh, because you want your companion to be alive as much as possible that way you're always proccing your bondings um, one last thing there's what Bane does it reduces their outgoing damage and increases their incoming damage so it means I hit them harder they hit me for less okay here is how that works you notice how my AP jumped when I use that it's good for AP generation you, you can even use it outside of combat to gain it and you can simply use your divine call okay I'm waiting for it to kind of fade away real quick and I'm going to show you Templar's Wrath okay so you see how my health is green in the top left corner I'm going to use Templar's Wrath okay that is all temp HP an insane amount it usually lasts a lot longer than that but it's because I'm not really in combat it just assumes that I am so I'm gonna use this I'm gonna show you something 16 I'm gonna use divine call once use divine call twice and I've just I'm ready to use it again so moves very quickly when you use your artifact it just does that and when you know that you're uh, daily is in effect you pop it up and it looks like a shield kind of like a halo with shields rotating around it that's how you know it's working all right so that is my build uh, it's a nifty build it kind of helps to actually know what you're doing a little bit and people will ask me what my rotation is my rotation I, is pretty non-existent when I go into fight Orcus it differs from when I go fight other enemies generally it, it just all depends I generally start with Templar's Wrath hit Orcus with Bane a couple of times quickly put up my circle of power drop my artifact uh, right away and then immediately use Templar's Wrath and Bane again and use Divine Call whenever my health gets hit okay so that's what I typically do I might hit him with a few of my R2s if you forgot what my R2 does the strike forces them to attack me and only me okay so again that's about what I use on them other enemies throughout Castle Never or other dungeons I'll use my L2 to go hit multiple enemies. I'll hit my R1, Templar's Wrath to stay alive, you know. It, it, it just varies depending on what I am attacking. 
okay it's more or less what am I using when things are coming like when I fight dragons and dragonflight I use circle of power first and foremost then Templar's wrath depending on how close I am to the enemy if I'm further out I will be using Bane first and foremost because it's long range I can target any enemy with Bane but circle of power is wherever I'm at okay and Templar's wrath is nearby enemies so keep that in mind when you're building the character if you're wanting to use this build I thank you but if you're not so be it if you like to derive anything from my build that's much appreciated too um, it's not a cheap build by any means because to reinforce your armor is a hundred thousand diamonds each and I have reinforced eight pieces of equipment so and in addition doing the black ice upgrades so keep that in mind it is not cheap and it's not easy to upgrade some of these weapons if you're going to be up, uh, using any other weapons other than these uh, which I definitely do recommend for the cloaked ascendancy with the river district weapons are pretty good because these are kind of a nightmare and a half to get <laughs> for relic especially now that they have nerfed uh, anointed army for the devo the devoted cleric so kind of a nightmare to upgrade this any further so keep that in mind if you are going to be getting the cloaked ascendancy weapons I recommend the Fey Mace for the additional AP that it gives you and the outgoing damage as well as outgoing healing or the Life Forged which gives you uh, increased defense and then adds 10% of your defense to your power for 10 seconds. Remember that when I'm in combat 10% of my defense is 3,000 extra, or 3,100 extra power. And every little bit of power comes in handy. And if you're in a party with this class, with this build, I'm going to make sure that you, you understand this, your power will go up a lot. I think I see roughly a 50% increase in my power when I'm in a party. So it just all kind of depends on who you're with. Uh, I usually party with a great weapon fighter and just having that great weapon fighter in my party increases it that much. So keep an eye out, an eye out for that because it is great that this class just keeps getting more and more powerful uh, as you get more people, okay? And you'll notice that I only hit things for, like, a little bit of damage. Every yellow hit is my damage. I did, like, 13,000, which is nothing. My companion is taking swings at it. It's okay. Alright. So, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you, those of you who are kind of curious about my build I know I had a request back when I did Castle Never a while back it varied a little bit I didn't really have the relic weapons back then uh, I was just using I think the elemental no no it was the burning set so and anyone that's looking or watching this video and is not part of the RNG screw me or does not have another guild that they're in and wants to join uh, we do have a requirement of being level 70 with a item level of 2200 or more. And all that we ask in return is when you join, make sure that you donate 800 influence a week. If you're interested, go ahead and message one of the guild leaders uh, and we should let you know. Because uh, we'll probably want to talk to you before you join. Alright, so thank you again for watching. Hopefully this was very informative.